In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about air balancing and we're going to talk about proportional balancing. This video is part of a series or playlist. If you have not watched parts one through eight, I would highly recommend you do so before you really move on to this video. And the other note I need to make is you cannot learn to do this by just watching a video. Okay, apprenticeship in the HVAC trade is very important as well as good individualized instructions. These videos are designed to be more of a refresher or a basic introduction than a full HVAC program. You really, if you want to learn HVAC, if you want to learn these individual parts of the trade, you do need to have training, which includes both hands-on and classroom. So we talked a little bit about air balancing, and we talked about the stepwise method of air balancing the last time, where we were balancing everything to be within a 10% margin of error. The problem is that this can leave, that method can leave hot and cold spots and it's not all that accurate. Okay, you're not making sure that all of the registers are getting the correct amount of air or equal percentages of the air that's available. So the proportional method dials this in a little bit farther. So let's walk through an example of how the proportional method works. So you're going to create a chart, as we always do, to record readings. You're going to enter the locations and the desired airflow for each location. You're going to take and record a full set of airflow readings. You're going to calculate the percentage of desired airflow being delivered to each location. Okay, then you're going to rearrange the lines on the chart from the lowest percentage of desired airflow being delivered to the highest. And dampers are then adjusted to receive the desired balancing results. So let's walk through this step by step and show you some readings. Okay, here's our basic chart. Okay, again, you have a register number. Okay, desired airflow, measured airflow, percentage of desired airflow. And the only thing that I want to say about this chart is when you record register numbers, try to do them in a way where you know where they're at. Even put a room name like bath one, bath two, bed one, bed two, or something like that, office one, office 45, to make sure you realize where these things are. It's very easy in a large construction project to not be able to find the register you're looking for. Supply locations are balanced to each other, not a predetermined percentage range. Okay, the stepwise method, we used a predetermined percentage range, normally plus or minus 10%. In this method, we balance the locations to each other. All dampers are adjusted in this procedure, with the exception of the damper that feeds the area with the lowest percentage of desired airflow. Once a damper is adjusted, it is not touched again. Once completed, all dampers will be set so that the same percentage of the desired airflow is delivered to all locations. This provides very accurate comfort and temperature control. You want to start off by making sure there's enough air being supplied to the duct system by the blower. As with the other method that we talked about in the last part of this series, you cannot balance properly if you don't have enough air. Repair any and all air leaks prior to balancing, especially with this method. Once you start dialing dampers back to balance these against each other properly, you're going to increase the air that is being dissipated through air leaks. You want to start off by making sure all dampers are in their fully open position before you start the balancing process. But again, repairing any air leaks is extremely important. So let's take a look here. We have our same, this is the same diagram as we talked about in the last video. Okay, we probably have 1400 CFM that's required. Okay, we should measure 1400 CFM, but that doesn't often happen. You're gonna have to repair leaks. Okay, so you start off by entering the register location and the desired airflow. Okay, the desired or designed CFM values comes from the project plans or prints. You obtain a full set of readings for the project. Don't adjust any dampers. Okay, so you go down, you obtain a full desired reading. Now, 
our value, our percentage of desired airflow formula is a little bit different in this method. All you're doing is dividing the actual volume by the desired value and multiplying by 100. Okay, it's a percentage reading we get. So in this case, let's look at the example. We have a desired airflow of 250. We measure 220. So we do our parentheses first. We have VA divided by VD, which is 220 divided by 250. We get 0.88 times 100. Our percentage of the design is 88%. So areas that are receiving less than the desired amount of airflow will be indicated by design percentages less than 100%. You will never get a negative number with this formula. Okay, you should never have a negative number. If you get a negative number, somehow you've gotten a return grill in mixed into your supply registers. Another one, 250, our actual is 300. Okay, we take our 300 divided by 250, we got 1.2, multiply it by 100, our percentage of the design is 120. Again, if there's more than the desired amount of air, you're going to have a value of greater than 100%. The result will never be negative. We calculate the percentage of desired airflow for each location. We enter the obtained airflow readings in the third column of the chart or in the final column of the chart. Okay, don't make any adjustments to the damper positions at this time. Now, here comes the tricky part. You want to recreate the chart, reordering the chart based on the percentage of the desired air. Order the areas from the lowest percentage of desired air to the highest. Okay, so a lot of us, when we do this, we use an Excel spreadsheet because all you have to do is click your sort, the sort data and go on this column from lowest to highest. The area with the lowest percentage of desired air will be the only area that does not get adjusted. In this case, the damper for Office 4 will not be adjusted. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so again, the, air, the arrows are basically showing how we reordered this. Office 4, Conf 1, Lounge 2, Office 1. Okay, we're ordering from the lowest percentage being delivered to the highest. This is extremely important. Now, the lowest percentage damper you are not touching. You are leaving that at 100% open. You lock it down and you don't touch it. Okay, you're going to start by adjusting the second lowest desired airflow. Okay, and they're adjusted in, we're going to adjust them in order. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is you're going to adjust this one, conference one, or whatever your second lowest airflow percentage is. You're going to close that damper until the percentage of airflow from conf one to office four are the same. In other words, you, when you close this damper down, it's going to cause the airflow in other areas to increase. Okay, so here we started off with 160 and 210. We want now, we want them both to be at 81%. So the percentages are equal. Okay, so we're going to now have a measured air airflow of 162 to 203. Okay, both Office 4 and Conf 1 are being supplied with 81% of the desired airflow. All we did was close Conference Room 1 down a little bit. Now, if you go back and compare what we had before and after, you'll see that the airflows in the green areas are increasing. When we decrease airflow in any one place, the airflow has to increase in another place. Think back to the laws of T, the T that we discussed back in another place. If you're throwing one thing into a T, a certain amount of CFM, you have to have the same amount of CFM coming out of the T. It doesn't vanish, okay? Then you go to your next area. You adjust the, net, the third one so that all the airflows, you decrease this damper 
until all the other airflow percentages are equal. You don't touch these other two dampers. These are locked down. Don't touch them again. Once the airflow is equal, the air damper for lounge two is secured, and the airflow for the you'll notice that these areas are still increasing. That's okay. Watch what happens. You're going to go to your next one. Now when we decrease office one to get it down to the other percentages, you'll notice that now we're at 84%. Everything else is proportionally increasing. Lock it down. You're never going to touch the prior dampers again. This is a one pass. Okay, snack area. We decrease again. And we pull it down so everything else is proportional. You notice the percentages are equal. But you'll notice the percentages of the desired are coming up as we move through here. Next will be Office 5. We adjust it down so all the percentages are equal. All we're doing is closing dampers. But you'll notice the areas in green are still increasing. Watch what happens when we go to dampers, the next damper, Office 2. Now we're all at 90%, but the percentages being delivered are equal across those that we've already adjusted. The laws of the T are falling in here. Air has to go someplace. It can't just vanish. Adjust that down. All of a sudden, we're now all the way at 93% because, again, it's proportional. Conference 2, we're now at 95%. Now Lounge 1 is going to be loud and screaming. You are not going to adjust any other dampers because once I adjust Lounge 1, we are now all at 100% of our desired airflow. Okay. So using the proportional method is a lot more accurate. Now, if I wasn't getting enough airflow out of the blower here, Okay, if I didn't have enough airflow to start with, you would not achieve 100%. It is critical that you get enough airflow to start with to match your desired airflow. Okay, this only works if you're getting enough air. So, as we talked in the last video about the stepwise method, that's within 10%. You can have some pretty large deviations between different registers because you're going to have... 10% plus, 10% minus. The proportional method, it is much more accurate, but it does take some time to adjust. You do get to go back and measure other things. Okay, you always measure against the last register that you took. So that's, that's the two methods of air balancing. And again, this video is more meant to be an overview. This is not a exact how to do this. And that's all for this.